Last time, we saw that we could make better claims with conditional exchangeability. We could either be more moral or more rational in experiments, or we could use it in observational studies to get us more towards causation instead of association. However, we learned that under conditional exchangeability, we couldn't just naively get the average causal effect. We could, however, get the average causal effects in the subpopulations, but how do we get it for the global population? One way to get this is with standardization. So let's go back to the basics. So for example, we have a treatment, uh, which is a heart. So some people will get the heart, some people won't get the heart. Now, this is not just a heart, this is of course um, uh, a surgery as well. So you go under anesthesia, you get the risk of infection. So it's more than just a heart. Um, uh, we go ahead and we test on the population of the United States of America. So this is again a study that was done in the United States of America. Uh, and this is our population here. We're not going to be using this too much, but just so you note. The outcome of interest we are interested in is the number of days survival. Number of days survival. And um, we'll call this Y. And of course, we are interested in the average causal effect of the entire population. So what is the average causal effect of the entire population? So once again, we are asking what is the average causal effect of the entire population uh, of, uh, of United States uh, as measured by number of days survival uh, of the treatment uh, of the heart transplant. So let's get started. So we've got a population uh, that consists of two types of individuals. Uh, one type of individual is in a critical situation, so critical. And the other type of individual is in a mild situation. So they are, they're in a mild uh, situation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and for simplicity's sake, I'm going to label the critical uh, L equals 1. Uh, I'm going to use L to sort of represent any of these strata of the population. And later, I might call them confounders. So L equals 1. And I'll go ahead and label the, uh, let me use uh, yellow up here. And I'll go ahead and label the mild up here L equals 0. Okay. Last time we talked about um, uh, assigning the critical and the mild uh, patients to different types of treatments. Uh, so for example, the uh, critical patients would receive a 90% chance of getting the heart, 90% chance of A. Whereas the mild patients would get a 25% chance of A. Okay. And so we can, we can pretty easily figure out what the average causal effect in the critical patients is because we have exchangeability amongst the critical patients. Because we have exchangeability amongst the critical patients, the average causal effect amongst the critical patients is Y sub A minus not A. You basically just take the association because association equals causation under exchangeability. I'll go ahead and label this L equals one. So we can go ahead and find the average causal effect in the critical patients, and we can go ahead and find the average causal effect amongst the non-critical patients as well. So this is this is quite interesting. Uh, you know, you could go ahead and pass these results over to. Um, let me put a little cross through on both of these. You could pass these results over to doctors, and they they would find this you know quite interesting. These, these are these are good results. We can use these. However, uh, you might be interested, or hospitals might be interested, maybe US policy might be interested in what the true average causal effect is. Um, and in fact, we can't figure out what the average causal effect is with just this information. Instead, we need one more piece of information. Uh, the piece of information we need is what percent of the entire population is critical and what percent of the entire population is mild. Okay. So what we would do, uh, we'd go ahead, we'd measure this, uh, and perhaps we'd get 30% uh, of the entire population is critical uh, versus 70% uh, of the entire population is mild. So we get these numbers. And now we can figure out what the average causal effect is. The average causal effect is simply, so this is y sub a uh, minus not a, uh, and this is for both L's, so I leave the L's out. So the average causal effect is simply a weighted average of the causal effects in the critical and in the mild strata of the population. And how do we find what weights we assign to them? It's pretty simple. Uh, we simply say, hey, what percent of the population is critical? So 0.3% of the, or 0.3 uh, of the population is critical. And so we multiply that times the average causal effect in the critical population. We then add up, we take this average of 0.7, because 0.7 is mild, of the mild population. 
So simply what we've done here is we've taken, we've used exchangeability uh, in these small populations, uh, in the critical population and in the mild population to find the average causal effect in the critical and average causal effect in the mild. And then we've taken the weighted average of them, the weighted average as to, or the weighted average as defined by their percent of populations in the, uh, their percent in the actual population. Okay, so this hopefully seemed super simple to you. That being said, it will get more complex, I promise. Uh, so next time we're gonna be talking about uh, two different types of effects modification.